During the next following minutes, I will give you um, an overview about the topic major bone augmentation using a customized titanium mesh and Geistlich biomaterials. My name is Emily Hartmann. I live nearby Stuttgart, um, a city in Germany, which is very famous for its car industries like Porsche or Mercedes. I am an oral surgeon and I work in a private referral practice for over 10 years. Apart from this, I'm a scientific associate from the University of Mainz. I hereby declare my co conflicts of interest. For some patients, implant placement would not be an option without horizontal and vertical bone augmentation procedures. Let's have a look at these patients. It's obvious that with a conventional treatment method and a conventional GBR technique, um, these cases won't work. Please remember the perfect defect classification implemented by Professor Busser this morning. These major bone defects occur after trauma, tumor resection, tumor treatments, chronic inflammation or implant loss. According to our experience in private practice, these cases will increase because of rising age of population. Conventional treatment methods like distraction osteogenesis or block grafts from intra and extra oral donor sites are well known and also their advantages and disadvantages like a high comorbidity of the patient. Another treatment option like conventional titanium meshes have to be cut, bent and trimmed during surgery. Aside from this, it is time consuming and skills dependent. Their sharp edges may influence soft tissue healing and enforce exposures. So how do you treat exposures in everyday routine? My intention is to introduce you to the surgical procedure and digital workflow of a new technology to handle such major bone defects. I will explain this protocol using an example. It includes a customized titanium mesh called ExoCBR and Geistlich Biomaterials to enable implant placement in complex three-dimensional bone defects. And let's have a look at this 64-year-old gentleman. He was a very smart guy, an old 64-year-old um, Russian opera singer who was obviously not satisfied with the aesthetics and the stability of his prosthesis. And this is essential for his work, of course. So the clinical analysis showed a highly atrophied situation in the upper jaw. The residual teeth were short to medium term, not worth to be preserved. And also the soft tissue situation was very difficult. There were some smaller fibromatous changes and also the typical radiating ligaments and muscle fibers. So this is the typical situation of elderly people after tooth loss many years ago. The significant vertical and transversal deficit as well as the challenging soft tissue situation made a functionally and aesthetically satisfying implant placement impossible. And this fact was obviously con confirmed by radiographic analysis, as you can see here. On the picture on the right, you see the huge, huge vertical defect. So what was the treatment plan? The bone augmentation procedure was planned by using a customized titanium mesh and geistlich biomaterials. Later, four implants should be placed to fix a partial prosthesis. The residual teeth should be preserved until final prosthodontic restoration to avoid pressure 
on the augmentation material and to stabilize the prosthesis. After acquisition of cone beam CT, a virtual three-dimensional model of the bony defect was generated by means of computer-aided computer manufacturing CAD CAM technology. The desired augmentation volume, as you can see on the picture left, was digitally planned, added, and the customized mesh designed accordingly. In a selective laser sintering process, the mesh was manufactured according to the previous digital design. And on the picture on the right hand, you can see the final product, the lattice structure XOCBR. The surgery itself was performed under local anesthesia. The incision line was done according to the principles of Professor Kleinheinz, taking care of an adequate vascularization. After elevation of a full thickness flap, the very thin alveolar ridge was revealed. And on the picture on the right hand, you can see the fitting of the titanium mesh. The bone deficit is obvious like marked here. And there were only two millimeter bone margin left. So you are not, we were not able to perform a bone splitting or something like that. The mesh was then taken outside the mouth and was filled extra orally with a grafting material. In this case, pure bioos particles. The vascularization was enforced with perforations of the recipient bone site and then placed in situ again. Afterwards, it was fixed with four screws to gain mechanical stability, as we all know is absolutely necessary for an adequate bone regeneration. On top, three geistlich bioguide membranes were placed. The wound closure was achieved by suturing without tension in a two-layer technique. Now, please have a look at the clock on the right hand. This was the time for surgery, including taking these pictures for you. So in my hands, this would not have been possible with one of the conventional techniques. The post-operative measures were the application of a dressing plate or surgical splint, whatever you call it, a consequent medication with prednisolone, amoxicillin and ibuprofen, and the avoidance of prosthesis. And this slide shows the healing process. At future removal, a clinically healthy marginal area and a full soft tissue coverage were present. On the picture on the top on the right hand, the extra oral situation of the patient is shown. Can you imagine looking at these pictures that this patient is under reliquis? And after a healing period of six months, a new cone beam CT data set was collected to verify enhancement of the bone augmentation volume and to plan implant surgery and removal of the titanium mesh. And obviously there was a huge bone gain as planned in advance. Here you can see the clinical inflammation free situation six months after mesh insertion. Now in a second stage surgery, the mesh is exposed. The screws are removed as you can see picture right hand. And a cylindrical bone specimen was gained. And the magnification reveals that there was really newly formed bone. The titanium mesh was removed by using some predestined breaking points. The manufacturer calls it an easy removal function. And after complete removal of the titanium mesh, the augmented bone volume was of stable dimension and well vascularized. And I really like this picture on the left side because you can see how this 
healthy regenerated bone look like and it really looks like the impression of the digitally planned augmentation volume i showed you before the implant placement of four camlock implants was performed following the standard procedures and this x-ray was taken directly after surgery and you can see the vertical height of the bone level Because we are a surgical referral practice, the prosthesis was made elsewhere. And these are the pictures the dentist sent us. And this is the situation after three years. The augmented bone level is stable and the patient had four other implants in the lower jaw since then. And this is the most positive sign we can get. The patient had undergone an augmentation procedure in the aperture and is now willing to take another surgical procedure to improve his life quality. At the beginning, I promised you to present an example of how we are able to treat these kind of major bone defects. But this case is not a single case. During the last years, 6,000 cases with this protocol were carried out and major bone defects were regenerated in a reliable and precise way. The conventional techniques like block raft harvesting, I already mentioned them at the beginning, or conventional tie meshes, they have some really severe drawbacks. They are time consuming, they create a high comorbidity of the patient by using intra and extra oral donor sites, and they are also skills dependent. This new trend, these digitally designed and patient specific meshes, helped to overcome these problems by reducing the comorbidity of the patient. Please remember the Russian opera singer, he was under a liquid. We avoided an additional traumatization and an additional surgical site and shortened surgery time as well. The mesh had no sharp edges and fitting was not skills dependent. By digitally planning the augmentation and the implants in advance, this protocol facilitated and shortened surgery time in general. And these facts were also confirmed by the recent literature and the recent papers we performed. The titanium meshes are well known to work as a mechanical scaffold and create stability for bone healing in large three-dimensional defects. Based on the principles of the conventional GBR technique, individualized titanium meshes are proposed to overcome the problems of the conventional meshes. And the recent literature, we were able to show that the individualized meshes provide a safe and time-saving augmentation technique, especially for the major bone defects. In brief, the scientific, clinical, and histological results demonstrated the ICSOS-CBR protocol as a successful and predictable procedure for rebuilding a major bone defect. The digitally planned augmentation procedure offers a simplified handling and a precise fit. Because of the significantly reduced surgery time, comorbidity of the patient is also reduced. In general, the full digital workflow simplifies the surgical procedure. So thank you for your kind attention. And if questions arise, please do not hesitate to contact me. Vielen Dank. And now let's have a look at the survey, I think. Okay. Okay. Very interesting because in the 1990s, we had these kind of meshes and they didn't work well because uh, uh, there were a lot of soft tissue dehiscences reported. And then when this uh, mesh gets infected, then you have a, then you have a mess, uh, not a mesh, a mess. And now my question is, uh, how often do you see these uh, soft tissue dehiscences still in this kind of procedure? Okay, um, the literature is very clear. 
um, we would say there were exposures in about 20 to 35, 40 percent. So the range is very huge. But it's important. I have to um, look at the survey because um, it there's no matter if there is an exposure because it's not like we have an exposure of the real bone. If to be honest, if you have an exposure of the autogenous bone, um, the graft will get lost. Uh, either if you rinse with chlorhexidine or if you reduce the graft, you will not be able to place the implants. And this is what we found in our recent research. This is not the case with the customized titanium meshes. Um, in, we were able to place implants in three private practices in about uh, 97 to 100%. And this is a very good result. So. Mm -hmm. We don't care if there's an exposure. And let's have a look at what the people say. It depends on the size of the exposed site. Yes, that's true. If you have a huge exposure, it might get difficult to uh, uh, clean it or something like, like that. But the most important thing, what I want to talk about is, I do nothing, just wait. There are only 4% who answered this, um, of course, if there's an inflammation of, uh, of this site, you have to add antibiotics and you may rinse with chlorhexidine, but you should not remove the graft. You should calm down. You should calm down the patient and just wait the time you have to wait uh, for the regeneration of the bone and then Good. you will succeed. Good, thank you very much. Now, I, I'm a little surprised that uh, you tell us that you need six months of healing and you just use bio also. So no composite craft. And we know from uh, Istvan Urban that he has been the master of uh, vertical bone augmentation and is using actually always a composite craft because he has observed much better treatment outcomes. And he's using eight to 10 months of healing period. So therefore, why do you have such a miraculous outcome? Because that is much, much better. And uh, do you have the long-term data to prove that these implants and then stay in place? I mean, at the papers you showed, most of them were case reports or short-term, uh, if, look, if I looked very carefully to the list. Yeah. Um, so, of course, we will uh, present some long-term results, the five-year results, they are in production, and we have really, really good results. So, this is a teaser for the um, upcoming publication. Um, and, of course, if there's a huge defect, we intend to walk uh, to wait a little bit longer for eight to ten months, it's okay. But um, I would say the main, um, main healing time will be six months. So this is according to our experience, it's enough, six to eight months, it's okay. Okay, so then we look forward to see these papers, uh, please in English peer review journals. That's always what, that's the standard of care, I would say. And then uh, we will judge that. I, I love, of course, the three-dimensional, also the digital technology, because that gives an improvement, that's no question. And we will see if this procedure will become a standard for these. That's not very often the effect, but uh, it's important to have good procedures for major defects. So thank you very much. Thank Best you. regards to Germany. And I uh, hope to see you once in the future. Yeah.